I might get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to say it. Uh, so I took out student loans like 99% of people. And I was in my second to last year when we started that business. I actually took some of my student loan money to open that business. And I did that because the interest... <laughs> The interest rate on the student loan was lower than getting a business loan. So why would I get a business loan if I could tweak and make it work? So we did. Hey, 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 you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Nurse Boss Shift. It's your girl, Dr. Kiana Jones. I'm Crystal Parker. And we are coming with another one. We're super excited. Again, you guys, bringing you the latest talent in this nurse entrepreneurial pool. And today yes. we bring to you Dr. G, BNP. Welcome, Dr. Yes. G. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Jones, Crystal. It's amazing to be here. I really appreciate the invite. Um, I'm humbled to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so before we get started, we just want you to tell everybody, give us an introduction to you, a little bit about your nursing journey and like kind of how that led to entrepreneurship. Sure. Certainly. I'll give you the annotated version okay. for sure. Perfect. <laughs> so um, I graduated um, undergrad at Southern University. Shout out to SU down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Let's go. HBCU. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so graduated back in 2010. I'm aging myself, but that's okay. Uh, had first job as a, a tele nurse, a uh, night shift, of course, like, you know, most of us started at night. Um, and it was interesting. That job actually set me up for the rest of my career. And I was unknowingly, um, that unknowingly happened. Um, what I mean by that is uh, every night around 4 a.m., I would kind of get a little fascinated by the telemetry strips. So I would go stand by the teletech because the teletech was on our floor. And so she was really nice. Her name's Rachel. Shout out to Rachel. We actually still keep in contact all these years. Um, and so I guess I was new and I was timid and she saw me interested. So she said, hey, do you want to learn how to read strips? And I said, well, is that something that a nurse needs to know how to do? She laughed. She said, nurses don't know how to read strips. I said, what? She's like, yeah, nurses can't read strips. And I'm like, basketball player in me was like, okay, I got this. I said, I'm going to know how to read strips. So she's like, come on, come sit next to me. So our relationship evolved and then it became my job to read every strip 4 a.m. on the floor. Um, fast forward a couple of nursing jobs. Fast forward. It was actually my last floor nurse job. I was working days, uh, but it was a 24 hour to limit, uh, excuse me, 24 hour OBS unit. Um, by this point, I had moved to Dallas, relocated to Dallas. Um, so I was getting report from the night shift nurse and she was like, yeah, this lady's normal sinus rhythm. And so I looked up at the telemonitor and I'm like, mm, that looks like a first degree in a bundle branch block. Now I laugh because the way I read strips now <laughs> versus the way I read strips, this is back in 2014, this happened, or it's completely day and night. I couldn't tell you if it's a left bundle or a right bundle. I just knew it was a bundle branch block and it looked like a first degree. Mm -hmm. I go and I check on the lady. Hey, you know, I'm Trinice. I'm your nurse. She's all, nurses are busy, dear. Go. I'm fine. I'm like, eh, something didn't sit right with me. And like I said, by that point, I was a nurse for about four years. I go check her 12 lead on her admission. And that looked like textbook sinus rhythm. And I'm like, okay, this doesn't look like that. So I called internal medicine. And in the meantime, I had the tech get vitals. And of course we had labs or whatever. I called internal medicine. He's like, I don't know, call cardiology. And I'm like, okay. So <laughs> call cardiology. He's like, get a 12 lead. Cool. Get a 12 lead. The new 12 lead looked exactly like the telemetry monitor. And it didn't look like her baseline 12 lead. I'm like, this is a first degree block. And she has a bundle branch block. Called him back, told him what happened. She, he walks up to the room, physically takes the patient off the floor. And I never see her again. Fast forward a couple of weeks. I see him in the elevator and I said, hey, remember that lady? And, you know, the EKG and all that. He had to think about it. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good catch. She had a small heart attack. And he just walked off. Wow. So that stuff like that kept happening. Yeah. Uh, and then my nurse manager, she was in my ear. Oh, you need to go back to school. Trinice, you need to go back to school. I was like, I was a newlywed at the time. I was on some other stuff. <laughs> you know, I had my own, my own little thing going. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, okay, let me just go back and go. 
So in fall of 2014, I enrolled in the University of Arizona's um, BSN to DMP program Mm -hmm. with a specialty as an acute care nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I did the program that took me three and a half years, full time, no breaks, Um, got to the end of the program and I had to do my doctoral dissertation. I did that in African-American hypertension, specifically JNC8 recommendations seven and eight. Um, and I ended up winning most outstanding dissertation in a vulnerable population at, um, graduation. It was nominated for ANCC, ANCC dissertation award. I didn't win that one, but I was nominated for it. Um, so I had done cardiology, you know, all that. I kind of felt like fell into it and then loved it. Um, so then fast forward, graduated in 2017, I was working as a nurse educator. I was doing grad school full time too. Uh, Uh, once I got my, my big girl job. First MP job was cardiology nurse practitioner back in 2018. And I actually just recently less, left that job a month ago. Okay. So I was there, yeah, for four and a half years. Saw a lot, learned a lot, learned a lot about myself, um, but really learned a lot about people and the patients and just, you know, being able to help them heart failure, hypertension or cholesterol or arrhythmias, palpitation, whatever. It was just, it was a rewarding experience. But unfortunately, the culture wasn't right at that job for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Tried to ask for some assistance and that was ignored, (laughs) to say Mm -hmm. the least. I'm putting Mm -hmm. it mildly. Right, right. (laughs) So I started reevaluating my nursing life, my nursing career. I should also mention I taught part-time as an adjunct faculty, Mm -hmm. West Coast University. I taught there for two and a half years, kind of dibbled and dabbled in some things. Mm -hmm. At West Coast, I didn't feel heard. I kept trying to get them to get an EKG course or even let me teach an EK and no one wanted to pay attention to me. So I said, well, I'm just going to start my own thing. That's how Dr. G, the MP was birthed because I saw in my students that there was a disconnect on EKG interpretation. And no, you don't need to know how to read an EKG like a cardiology MP or an EP MP, but you do need to know sinus rhythm. And if there's a change, like I did back in the day, like I don't know quite what that is, but I know it's not right. So let me act on it. So that's how Dr. G, the MP was was birth. And I started that in June of 21. June of and we're 21. we're still doing that. Okay. Yeah. And so tell us, first of all, I worked at West Coast for 11 years. So let me just okay. <laughs> say that. Okay. <laughs> and okay. here, here in SoCal. Um, but I was going to ask you, so tell us what Dr. G, the MP is like, what that business is, is that you have. Because we haven't talked about that. Right. So it, like I said, it was really birth in the need to help colleagues because EKG is a pain point for a lot of nurses and nurse practitioners because most of our curriculum doesn't cover it. Thankfully, in the University of Arizona, in my grad program, we had a whole EP class. Mm. So I felt very prepared going to that school, but we know that's not standardization, Mm -hmm, of course. mm -hmm. Um, And just seeing, being around nursing for over a decade and seeing the lay of the land, I decided to go ahead and start that. Um, because of my teaching experience with at West Coast, and not even just West Coast, just in my life, I've coached basketball. I know I have the gift of teaching and connecting with people and breaking it down and making it simple and getting rid of extraneous information. Mm-hmm. Um, so I decided to really take my talents and utilize them where I see gaps. Because every time I acknowledged the gap, it was met with resistance. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I have the power to help my profession and my colleagues. So I'm certainly going to to take that. And Mm so, like I said, we'll be making our two year anniversary next month. So that's uh, very exciting. Um, And my clients are near and dear to my heart. One of them, she texted me, what was that last week? And she said, I'm only 30 minutes in and you've taught me more in 30 minutes than I have my whole career. See, Um, wow. I don't believe in minutia. I just want to get, get in, get you what you need and get out. Yes. I love that. So let me, let me ask you the, Oh, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. You no, know, I got a lot of questions, so go ahead. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, um, now because I'm per diem in the cath lab, um, and I love it because I'm not, I was an ER nurse before, so I knew when something didn't look right, I could probably couldn't tell you what it was, but I know that didn't look right, especially when it's paired with symptoms. Now being in cardiology, um, and one of the reasons why I do still like working my one day a week uh, when I do is because I feel like I went from ER knowing a, a little bit about a lot. And now I'm just so fascinated with learning a lot about one thing, which is the heart and um, 
it's one of those things that's so complex, but then I feel like it's easy mm -hmm. once you break it down. And um, so just going through that, it's like, yes, I could definitely, because even the same, it's like, we have to do these cardiology tests. And I'm like, every time I fail, like every time, <laughs> <laughs> every time. Um, but then in, we have to even be on the cath lab, you have to take this extremely hard test. So in, pr mm -hmm. in preparing for that, I was able to study more and kind of have people break it down. So I do, I do um, see how it's so important uh, for nurses to learn EKGs because it's kind of just like, like we go through it in school, you get enough to pass the test and then you don't think about it anymore. So I right. love that you're helping in that gap because it is definitely so important for nurses to learn and to be able to recognize those things and to recognize, as you said, you were able to intervene when someone was having a small um, heart attack, which as we know, can lead to a bigger heart attack. So mm -hmm. I just love, I just love that idea. I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. And, and honestly, well, my last job where I worked part time was I was house soup. And I just remember every time we would get a group of because we were over the travelers, too. So we would get a group of travelers or they had to mm -hmm. take these these EKG tests. And it was mm -hmm. a disaster. 50 yeah. percent would not pass. Mm -hmm. And yes. then the other 50 percent, about maybe 50 percent of them after some um, what do you call that? Um what do you call remediation. that? Yeah, remediation would pass. Well, okay. And then you had that other last little group that just like, mm -hmm. you got to give me the answers. <laughs> because right. I just, it's not going to happen. Which was, which was, I don't know. It's, it's when you think about it though, it is scary, you know, because we rely mm -hmm. on like um, our EKG tags or, you know, other resources, mm -hmm. but we should, we really should know it. So, or even the computer. Yeah, or right? even the computer. The, the on yes. the computer, yes, that there's yes. studies that show that that can be like a third incorrect. Mm -hmm. Um, and another yeah. point I'd like to make That's about really EKGs good. is this, and something I don't like. So you can teach someone in a textbook, you can teach the ACLS class, and they have this, but everybody's normal sinus rhythm looks different, right? Mm -hmm. So in my course, I teach principles, not necessarily memorization of what mm -hmm. it looks like, because if certain principles are present that is that rhythm. So right, you're not trying right. to memorize anything. Right. It's just, oh, I have to make sure that this is there. Okay, yeah. now I know it's minus. So is that right. like every P before this, a P way before this, the QRS this, is that the principle? Is that what principle? I've never heard it said. So a couple way. of principles for sinus rhythm. So yes, you have to have the P before the QRS and of course right. you have the T. Of course, we know the beats per minute is 60 to 100. Um, but one thing that people forget is this that the P wave has to be positive and lead one and two to be sinus. Mm. If your P wave is not positive and lead one and two, it is not mm. sinus. It may be junctional, maybe ectopic atrial, something else. So wow. again, those are the kind of principles I teach and I have a certain rhythm and I, I say, okay, start and lead two. Okay, mm -hmm. then you're going to go to V1. Then I want you back down and lead two. Then we're going to cut it in half. Then I want you to mm -hmm. look at these six limb leads. And I want you to look at these six precordial leads. Yeah. So it's like I'm I'm building in this system for the muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, then I can start picking it apart. Mm -hmm. Understanding what an IVCD is, intraventricular mm -hmm. conduction delay. It sounds mm -hmm. scary, but if you know what an IVCD is, I can teach you six different blocks. Again, wow. those foundational principles that aren't taught to us, but it sounds scary because it's foreign. Mm -hmm. I had a client, she texted me. She's like, Trinice, thank you so much for the course. I caught a bivesicular block. So basically we got three main wires in our heart and two mm -hmm. of the main three wires were blocked. Mm -hmm. And so she stopped and there was a pre-op appointment. She was a pre-op MP. Mm -hmm. So she stopped this guy and it needed to get stents. All wow. because she knew how to find a bivesicular block, which mm -hmm. again, I know that it sounds scary. It does. But if you know what an IVCD <laughs> is, and then you know, it's, so <laughs> in my EKG 101 and 102 course, I teach fascicular blocks. Wow. And like I said, it's like, it's so nice when you teach. And Dr. Jones, I'm sure since you have teaching experience, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. When someone's light bulb turns on, mm -hmm. that is like instant yeah. gratification. Like, yes, yes, yes. 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 Like, I just want to keep going and keep uh -huh. going and keep yes. going. So yes. I really try to make it simple. Crystal, you'll appreciate this. Mm -hmm. I teach people how to identify all heart attacks because you have this mm -hmm. patient that comes in, vague symptoms. Oh, I'm short of breath. I've gained some weight. Yeah, he has cardiomyopathy. Look, he had an mm. old inferior MI it's in the last mm. year that we've seen him, but you don't know the criteria for an old MI, so you right. miss it. Mm. Mm. So, Doctor G, okay, you're you're learning. You stumbled upon this this EKG this fascination, and now you've taken it, and now you're actually monetizing it. So, tell how did you go? That is not something that especially nurses do often. They don't say yeah. like, okay. 
this can be a bit, like, I see the need. Like, I see the nurses are struggling with this or my nursing students are struggling with this. I can do this. How did you make that? Like, what ha- was there something that happened that made you like, what if I start helping other nurses and I actually charge for it? What was that process like? Um, I will say, I think my um, journey into entrepreneurship is, is a bit unique. Um, the reason why I say that is this is my second business. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a business before. And even as a child, I was very entrepreneurial focused. Mm-hmm. Um, I, an undergrad, when I was in nursing school undergrad, I was working at Sears every Saturday selling TVs. Oh, and I used to clean up that little thousand dollar check was hitting. Oh, sales. <laughs> <Yeah. undergrad. laughs> right. So I kind of always had that in me, but wasn't sure how to channel it. Mm-hmm. And my first business, it wasn't successful, but the lessons that were learned. Oh my goodness. The valuable lessons, like experience truly is the best teacher. So I was able to take those lessons from the first business and then apply it to Dr. G. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will say I'm still challenged. I actually find that the biggest challenge in me having this platform is actually getting trust. There's a million EKG programs out there. And the client that that I told you texted me about the whole, I learned more in 30 minutes in this Mm -hmm. course than ever. Yes. She told me, she was like, I was scared this was going to be boring and I didn't know if you were legit or not. Yes. And that, because we had a back and forth. Mm-hmm. I had to nurture her to get mm-hmm. the sale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, and I didn't pressure her. She took her time. I let mm-hmm. her be the, mm-hmm. I wasn't aggressive. She pursued me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think she got to a point. She's like, well, what do I have to lose? You know? So yes. I did. I gave her a little bit of a discount on top of it. And she te- she texted me quick. She's like, this is the one. Yeah, she's like, thank you. This, <laughs> this is the one right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and I would challenge. I, one thing I would challenge you on is the first business. It was successful. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. And that I, I've had that too. By the way, like I, I invested in a ten thousand dollars. I knew I wanted to start a staffing company. This was like in two thousand and mm-hmm. I don't know seventeen, sixteen. And I mm-hmm. walked away because it was not for me. That was a success. Like I, I could have lost a lot more and I learned so much. So like, I feel like that's what people are afraid of. They're afraid of mm-hmm. that L, but it really is lessons. And like for me, and this is something I talk about on my webinar, on our webinars, the same L's that I took, I know now why I, I had to take them for you guys. Mm-hmm. So now right. when I can talk to you about avoiding these costly mistakes when we have a limited amount of income and resources and how and ways that you can do this and, and be a compliant and make sure you're following regulations. That's not going to put you at risk. Like that's the win. And I didn't appreciate it. Of course, at the time I was crying in the subway right. parking right. lot, <laughs> but trust me, I've been there too. <laughs> I made it through. And I think if people start out with that in mind, like, you know, this is a journey. Like, I am not mm-hmm. necessarily, I don't even know if I'm going to stick with this, but I'm starting. I'm becoming the person that I need, who I need to be. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all we're doing. And we're continuing to kind of let the market tell us things happen. We got AI now. We got all this other stuff happening. We're mm-hmm. shifting. We're adjusting accordingly. And that's the only thing I can commit to is could, could, I'll commit that I will adjust. I'll commit that I will also be consistent. And that's all I got. Changes, yeah, change is constant, and uh, I think you both could agree with this next statement I'm going to say about entrepreneurship is is, and I say this when I teach: get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like if you're a person who has to be comfortable, this isn't going to be for you. Mm -hmm. You you have to understand in order to grow, learn, evolve, change, be reach self actualization, you have to be uncomfortable. You cannot nothing nothing gets accomplished if you're comfortable all the time. Nothing. Not at the all. same. You plateaued. You might as well just yeah. go meet your maker. <laughs> right. Because right. you're not living. You're not living <laughs> at all. Right. <laughs> the monotony. Right. And go I wasn't ahead. even taking calculated risk. I mean, yes. I'm not a not gonna lose my my house and you know anything yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. But right. you know, I'll I'll give you an example. Our our first business, my husband and I, we had a alcoholic catering company. Mm. Say it again. Did you say alcoholic? Alcoholic. I see. Alcoholic. Yes. A okay. catering company. And we came up with the idea because at our wedding, we wanted alcohol catered, but because of the laws, you had to buy the alcohol, but then you have to get a bartender to make it. We're in Texas, by the way. Okay. Um, you had to get the bartender to make it. We're like, why, what if there's people cater food? What, why can't you cater alcohol? 
Mm-hmm. So you make specialty drinks. Right. So that was our business. We had specialty drinks. And I'll tell you, Dr. Jones, you're going to like this one. Uh, <laughs> I might get in trouble for saying this, but I'm going to say it. Uh, so I took out student loans like 99% of people. Mm-hmm. And I was in my second to last year when we started that business. I actually took some of my student loan money to open that business. Period. And I did that because the interest. <laughs> The interest rate on the student loan was lower than getting a business loan. So why would I get a business loan? Right. Tweak and make it work. So we did. Girl, that's exactly what I did with my PhD, just so you know. (laughs) That money, I got to extra. It was only like um, for the, what do you call it? Um, The, um, what is it called? Not the unsubsidized, but the other one. Um, It was only 8%. And then I was looking at banks Mm -hmm. and they were like 15, 20. I'm like, well, Mm -hmm. just pull it out of here. Right. (laughs) Which is exactly. exactly what I did. Right. <laughs> My so, so we're on the same wavelength for sure. <laughs> You're right. I do love that. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> I'm like, matter of fact, now that I think about it, I kind of started my own business. Was, I was in MP school too, so I'm sure some of those funds. Were- <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask about how you formulated your program. Did you um, just start? Um, kind of brainstorming ideas and then you kind of segmented it off into different sections or um, how did that work? And are you, I'm sure you're constantly revamping it or changing things as you see the need, but how did you create the course? Well, initially I should, I, I should say this and it's on my website now and I have a social media manager and I predicted the future. I told her, I said, look, I want to do cardiology concepts simplified for nurses and nurse practitioners. But my big seller was EKG. I do hypertension. I do cholesterol management as well. I've been flirting with the idea of doing heart failure, but that never really came to fruition. And she's like, you know, but everybody wants the EKG. I said, you do what you want, but I promise you, if you market me the way you're going to market me, I'm going to be known as EKGs. And that's actually not what I wanted. Mm. I wanted to be known for cardiology. Mm -hmm. Now, because EKG was such a pain point. I've just kind of went with it. I still offer hypertension and cholesterol management, but I don't have, I haven't recorded those courses and I, and I will not record those courses for one simple reason. Guidelines and studies change and I pride myself on being up to date. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants those, I had somebody, we did it last month. I did a live lecture with her for hypertension and cholesterol. We recorded it so she could refer back to it. But what I really like about EKGs is they're stagnant, right? Like me mm-hmm. teaching you normal sinus rhythm today yeah. is the same as it is five years from now. So it really, yeah. it really doesn't matter when I record it. So mm-hmm. I've kind of just let it happen. Like I've just, I haven't fought it, even though I knew it was going to happen. So I would say that's how I've kind of um, revamped is a wrong word, but, but, but kind of just gone with the flow. Mm-hmm. Cause as an mm-hmm. entrepreneur, sometimes you can't fight demand. You need to mm-hmm. just, 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 just go with yeah. the flow. Yeah. As far as revamping the classes, um, I remember when I was super new, like super duper new before I was officially Dr. G, the MP, and I was kind of tutoring people on the side. Mm-hmm. And I realized that in those early years, I would get the feedback that you really know EKGs, but it's too much. Mm. So I had to I had to dial break it, it down back. even more. You had to dial and it break back. It down. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More than I thought it needed to get right mm-hmm. now, because <laughs> when you know something, you know it. Right. But the other yeah. person doesn't. So you're thinking, oh, this is simple. It's just like I said, the circular block. Oh, it's one of the three wires is block. Well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're like three wires, which, you know, slow down, yeah. slow down. You get intimidated and you turn them off. Mm-hmm. So I've really chopped the courses up into baby pieces. I have five EKG courses now. I could record a sixth one, but I'm waiting because I'm trying to get people through the entry stuff before I get advanced with doing more AFib or pace beats or anything like that. Dr. G, let me just say this. You are the perfect example of when we talk about, because we always talk about, um, especially, okay, I do, Crystal and I do IV hydration training together. But then Mm -hmm. on my page, I'm always just talking about nurse entrepreneurship like we do here. Um, One of the things that I always say is like, anybody, not anybody. But like, we all have something that we are good at, that we can help Mm -hmm. other people who are not good at it. Mm 
And so you mm-hmm. found, I know when you first had that conversation about learning EKG G strips, that wasn't your goal. Like, okay, I'm going to be a mentor and a coach. It's something right. that you um, fertilize, you grew, and then you saw an opportunity. And and this is the problem. I think this is what a lot of nurses are afraid of. And they get intimidated because they're like, oh, well, you have to have a DMP. You have to have an MP. You have to do all this. No, you just have to have a gift. If you love mm-hmm. something and you want to give back to help other people not go through the same struggle, challenges, whatever it is, honestly, it doesn't even have to be healthcare. It could be surviving divorce. It could right. be being a being a single mom. It could be, you know, whatever you're good at. Right. Help somebody. And 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 being able to change the perspective, I should say the narrative from, oh, I want to make money to I'm helping people. I am focused on giving back to my community, whether it's my community of moms, nurses, whatever, right. giving back and helping them. That's all that you're doing. Yes, there needs to be an investment. That's an exchange in currency. It should be an investment because honestly, a lot of people won't do it. Free people don't make this, they don't take action. They're like, it, they, right. they look at it like it's not worth anything if you're, right. if it's free. You sh- I'm sure you know, you probably in the beginning did a, spent a lot of time helping people for free and then do hell with it, right? Nothing. <laughs> look, Dr. Jones, look, <laughs> let me tell you what I did my first year and I was exhausting myself. Mm-hmm. Every Friday I would do a free session. I'd mm-hmm. break down an EKG from start to finish. Mm-hmm. It would take me like 90 minutes because yeah, I can read an EKG in a minute or two, but if you need to explain concepts to people, I can't certainly teach that in five or 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I saw that I was kind of being devalued. Um, you know, yeah. And even though sales are tenuous at yes. best, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I've decided that, you know, every now and then I do something free. Um, like I did a free EKG breakdown for nurses week. I wanted to give back just, you know, mm-hmm. for nurses week. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually going to do another free one for my two year anniversary, but mm-hmm. I don't do them every week. I don't do them every month. You might mm-hmm. get it three times a year. People That's are, it. they don't, one of my mentors, my coaches, said nobody respects free and I had to look at myself too like I'm always on somebody's webinar or something the chances that I'm going to take action depends on how much money I invested if I invested mm-hmm. uh, five figures I'm going to do some stuff because there is no right. way I'm going to waste my money but if it was free maybe I will maybe I won't it's just mm-hmm. different and so and you know that doesn't and take out of this but- and I'm sure you you both have experienced this before. I've had people say, well, oh, it may be too expensive. Um, I can tell you, you can take my whole course catalog for well under a thousand dollars. So mm-hmm. I, I personally think I'm I'm low ball underpriced, myself. extremely, mm-hmm. extremely. I am. So you know. But I look at it like this. <laughs> if some of us have gone to nursing school, maybe back in the day, it wasn't a hundred thousand just because of inflation. Mm-hmm. But if you're spending over a hundred thousand dollars, you still yeah. don't know how to read an EKG. We're spending mm-hmm. some hundreds of dollars, Absolutely. right? Yeah. To take a skill that will stay with you. And I give the courses. Like once once you buy them, they're yours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't put it, oh, you only have access for three months or six months yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so I've I've heard have I've had to learn some hard lessons that way. Yeah. Um, but I'm hanging in there. And because like yeah. you said, Dr. Jones, at the foundation of what I'm doing, it's because I care. Yes. I didn't start this to make money. I do want to be compensated for my time and knowledge. Yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the reason I saw a need and I was trying to um, fulfill that need and give back to others. Mm -hmm. And something else interesting, Crystal, you'll like this to kind of answer your question, (laughs) not really revamping, but to revisit what you said uh, a moment ago. Uh, Another thing I told my social media manager that was making me nervous is because I said, not only do you want to push the EKGs, that's fine. I said, I'm letting you know when you do that, you are making me be the expert. And mm-hmm. see, I get real nervous about that. I'll tell anybody who listens to me, I'm not an expert in EKGs. I know more than most people. So right. if you know more than most people, that puts you in a position to teach. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be an expert. There are strips that I struggle with that look crazy. And I'm like, well, shucks, is that is that flutter? Or is that a two-to-one conduction? Or is that... But if you don't even know what two-to-one is, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm in a position to to give you that entry level so that you can do the high level things. Right. I I joke, maybe again, maybe I'm underselling myself. I always tell people, if you ask me to rate myself from on scale of one to 10, as far as EKGs or rate what I think most people are, I think most people when it comes to EKGs are a one or a two. 
Yeah. I really believe that. There are yeah. one or a two. Agreeable. I, agree. I would give myself, I would give myself a six or a seven. Mm-hmm. Solid. I'm a solid six or seven. There's some things I still struggle with. I have to ask the electrophysiologist. But again, the actual electrophysiologist is the expert in EKG. Right. So if you're a one or a two and I'm a six or a seven, there's a lot of stuff I can show you. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff. For sure. I, and I think I, that goes to most yeah. nurses get so wrapped up as we were talking about, um, you know, their degree level and things like this. And I always try to tell people, um, people will pay for what information you have because you might not be a 10, but you're definitely several steps uh, above. And people don't care, you know, when people are um, are dealing with the afra- uh, afraid of getting uncomfortable. And it's like, those people only want your information. They don't care if you're dressed up, right. if you have on makeup, if you're sitting with a nice background or if you're sitting in a car, you have the information they want. I need to learn EKGs and I need to learn them fast. I don't care that you're not an expert teaching me at an electrophysicist um, level, but you're you're giving me enough to where I can go into work and catch something. Mm-hmm. So I think that's so important for people to realize you don't have to be the expert researching right. it and studying it and knowing it more than the next person does uh, make you the expert, even when you don't want to be, but don't get so wrapped up in how everything looks and being so okay. uncomfortable because you think people are judging you when really they're praising you because you have something that they want to learn. So I commend you for going out and getting uncomfortable doing that. And I, I got two things Let's I want to add. I want to add to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Just two little things. The first thing is the next time somebody asks you, and I, you may not know this, I have an inner circle called Nurse Boss Inner Circle um, where I have high-level nurse entrepreneurs in my program. Okay, it's a year program. But the reason why I'm saying this to you is because first thing I will tell you is your prices are too low. Always. It's always too low. Mm-hmm. We always start out low. We always under, we feel underwhelmed by our by us, but I am overwhelmed by you. And I am yeah. definitely, um, I am proud to hear your journey. And honestly, it's an area that I definitely struggle with. And, and I make jokes about it on my social media, how we struggle with these EKGs. But that's a whole other story. Um, the next thing is I want is, is I want to tell you is that you are an expert. Because expert, by definition, is a person who has a comprehensive and authoritative knowledge of a skill in a particular area. And if that ain't you, I don't know what it is. <laughs> So we go, that's two things. So now right. you're an expert, raise your prices. Now we got that right. out the way. <laughs> we got that well, out the way. I will say thing. this. I will say this. Okay. I will toot my own horn. Dr. Jones, you will appreciate this. <laughs> so even though I acknowledge that there are some things about EKGs, I certainly don't know, mm-hmm. but I will tell you this. I am an expert in, I am a very good teacher. Yeah. Very, I can very see good. That. Um, let me give you a quick snippet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. The first step in my EKG course is what I teach. The first step is I always ask people, where do you look? Where, where do you start? If somebody hands you an EKG, I ask you both. If somebody handed you each an EKG, where would you look first? I start at the QRS. And I think I yeah, remember I that in school. Okay. And I see if there's a P right, wave. you guys say QRS. Yes, we're wrong. Yeah. Okay. Look at the P and the QRS. I, I, that's what I heard. Well, I will, I will preface it by saying there are multiple ways to do the same task. We always okay. start our IV differently. So, right. Right. you know, I'm not going to say that's wrong, but the okay. way I teach in my course is I'll say the first place you need to look is lead to. Oh. I don't care about anything else on the EKG. It's at lead to it's in its entirety at the bottom. And the reason why is because we have Memorial day coming up. Some people do fireworks on Memorial day. So if I want to go see fireworks, I don't want to be on top. I don't want to be on the side. I want to be on the ground because when I'm on the ground, I can look up and I see everything in front of me. That's precisely what lead two is. It's an inferior lead. So if I'm standing on the bottom, Uh when I look up, I can see everything in front of me. That's why you start in lead two. And first of all, I need, I'm talking about one single strip because I don't know nothing about it. I'm about to be totally true. I'll be looking like, uh, they be like, this is, I don't know. Uh, just give me the single strip. That's all I got for you. <laughs> so I think we're good. <laughs> so thank you, Dr. G, because what? listen, I did not know that. Well, I didn't but- clarify. I meant a 12 lead EKG. Yeah, and a 12 okay. lead EKG. I still would have went lead to the two. first line, girl. I don't, that's, gotcha. yeah, it would have still been the first There's line no for me. That. 
<laughs> that, there's no shame in that. Um, this has been such an amazing interview. Thank you so much for bringing Thanks. all this energy. I want yeah. to kind of dial back to, I know we've already talked about, you know, how you went on this journey and you guys, I think every nurse, even if you're not an entrepreneur yet, or if you're starting, you need to take her course. Yeah, I need to take her course. <laughs> right. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> um, but I know there's something else that you are doing and what you're where you're working. Now, I saw that when we were looking at, you know, a little bit about your background. I was like, hmm, we've had the corporate nurse on here before we interviewed her. So I want to mm-hmm. know and I want you to tell people about this new role that you're in. Me too, because honestly, every other week I, I'm quitting mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. I'm gonna get one. <laughs> well, I was like, I could exactly. do that. I could do that. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, um, let me tell you how it happened, and then I'll tell you what it what it is. Okay. So okay. I was working in the cardiology clinic for about a year, and I had a guy come up to me. His name is Maurice. Shout out to Maurice. Uh, we still keep in contact. Um, he went to Southern. Shout out to Southern again. Okay. And <laughs> we, we were talking and he was with Novartis mm-hmm. and he had a sales rep with him. So I'm thinking he's a sales rep. He's like, I'm not a sales rep. I said, well, what are you? He says, I am a medical science liaison. Yeah. I said, interesting. I said, tell me more about this. He basically said, I am the medical expert in whatever, whatever drug or, or device. He did drugs, but there's device medical science mm-hmm. liaisons too. Mm-hmm. But he said, I'm basically the expert in it, this medication was Entresto, and w- w- which we all know Entresto is a fabulous, fabulous medicine. Fabulous. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so his job was to literally know Entresto inside, outside, know the clinical data. And if healthcare providers or key opinion leaders or anybody in the industry had a question, they would come to him. Mm-hmm. So he was kind of trying to say, you know, I think you should do this. Now, at the time, I was only practicing for a year. I was like, no, I need to learn cardiology. I just started Dr. G. I was like, nah, leave me alone. But we've always kept in contact. Mm-hmm. And so, um, again, I'm using this word again, tenuous. Healthcare at best is tenuous. Mm-hmm. And um, not to put a damper on this episode, I have some major problems with the way nurses are treated in healthcare. Oh, God. And it is only yes. getting worse. Yes. It's only getting worse. Agreed. Um, <laughs> and... I, and as I told you guys before, I had some issues, we'll just call them issues at my job that it wasn't quite driving. Mm-hmm. So uh, again, relationships. I got to say this. Shout out to relationships. Okay? Shout out to networking. Sales rep. Yes. Right. <laughs> sales rep. Know her for three years. I'm not going to say a company name because I don't want to get into all that. Um, so me and her talking and we have a good relationship. We talk about basketball, basketball player, her daughter plays basketball. We just had a connection. So she calls me up last fall and she says, um, hey, Dr. Goodline, I just want you to let you know there is a medical science liaison position open at my company and I think you would be perfect for it. So I said, sure. I, I, she, she explained it to me and I said, yeah, I've kind of already been fishing and doing things. But the problem is these jobs are very hard to get, mm-hmm. like very, very hard. Mm-hmm. Typically, they go to pharmacists. Mm-hmm. Then if it doesn't go to a pharmacist, somebody who holds a Ph.D., mm-hmm. After that, they'll look at physicians and they're just now starting to look at PAs and MPs for this. Mm-hmm. But like I said, predominantly pharmacists. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I put in for it. We had, she had the referral for me and whatnot. Um, they had over 500 people apply for the job. But I always say, if God has your name on something, it doesn't matter. Period. Um, <laughs> so ultimately I landed the job. So I left my job last month and I've been at this job for a month. And when I tell you the learning curve, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> um but being new and being a baby all over again, I've mm-hmm. been connecting with some nurses that are MSLs. And if anything, this is what I want to say about the MSL position. Number one, it is an industry job. Number two, it is like clinical research. You're not doing the research, but you have to be an expert in the research that's out there. Mm-hmm. But I want to sound the horn and sound the alarm at another pathway that nurses don't know about that you can get into. Mm-hmm. OK, yeah. particularly, I will say this. Ninety percent of medical science liaisons have a doctorate. Every now and then you can get in with a master's. Actually, one in my current job that has a has a bachelor's. But generally, you have to have a, a doctoral degree to get the job. Mm-hmm. But I challenge anybody who enjoys teaching and educating and research and that sort of thing. Start looking. But it's going to be hard to get the job unless you have a connect. Mm-hmm. So start network. I was networking on LinkedIn. I had. Multiple, hey, shout out to all these nurses in the clinic, MPs in the clinic, be friends with your sales rep. Yeah. That's how I knew about new meds. 
that's I had their phone numbers. We were texting, call, and that was before I was trying to get a new job. It was yeah. just forming those bonds and connections with people. Yeah. Yes. So I challenge everybody if you're interested, look up medical science liaison. Um, very coveted job. Um, I'm proud to have landed it. Uh, out of all the candidacies, I had to do a presentation. I had to do a scientific presentation to get the role. Mm -hmm. I did it on on um, Jardians because I really like heart failure. Mm -hmm. Jardians. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing currently. Brand new, one month still in training. Yeah, and it's 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 yeah, it's I it's there. It. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, we so. I, we've heard great things about MSO um, positions, and I know <clears throat> that it is difficult to get in. One of the ladies we interviewed on here, she she's in her PhD program now, but she actually landed one eight years ago as a, a master's prepared nurse, and she was just saying okay. like it's not easy, but it's definitely worth it. Worth it. She works remote. She like mm -hmm. she she loves all the French benefits. If it's company car, mm -hmm. you know, she's mm -hmm. traveling. I think she only travels like 30% of the time. Um, so yeah, so I've heard amazing things. And does that help? Yeah, travel can be a bit little sketchy for some people. I mm -hmm. will say uh, I've been fortunate because my territory is Dallas, Fort Worth, which I live in Dallas, Fort Worth. Oh, and so the posting, okay. it actually said 60% travel, but it's in my area. So mm -hmm. I don't you know, everybody feels differently about travel, but mm -hmm. I, to me, driving 45 minutes is not really travel in mm -hmm. my personal opinion. Absolutely. So. Agreed. Agreed. Does that help you with, with your business? Cause I, okay, let me just tell you sometimes like, I'm like, if I was to do that, <laughs> cause after I, I talked to her on the interview again, I wanted to do the business, everything I always wanted to do. So I was like, if I do that, then I could still, you know, still got my coaching going on. I still did this. Um, and she was just saying like the work hours is not the same. Like you're really spending time connecting with people, with the key KOLs and key opinion leaders. And, you know, you're spending a lot of time studying the research. So it's not like you're sitting up on the computer, like typing away and just have to show your face on no. Zoom eight hours of the day. So does that mm -hmm. give you a little time to kind of dabble in, in your business, um, when you're in that position? Well, currently, so most MSL roles, you're going to be in training the first 90 days. Okay. So it's all immersive studying. So mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. not even to that point to give you a fair assessment of what that looks like. Full transparency. As far as my business, I have taken a slight back seat because I've started this new role. And it's like when I get off this call, I'm going to go back to studying. It's like being in school yeah. all over again. It's really intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I feel so blessed and, and so honored to be able to have this um, to help my family, put us in a better position financially. My mental health is much better this last month. Yeah. Not being at a place that that drained me and ignored me and didn't treat me very well. Um, so anything new is scary. But again, I practice what I preach. You can't learn and grow and evolve if you don't do anything new. And that's not to say I mastered cardiology. Of course, I, I didn't. No, I was very good. I was very, very good at mm -hmm, mm -hmm. seeing patients. And I miss my patients. But at the yeah. same time, you know you know when you need to leave. We all yeah. There's something inside of us that we know it's just time. Yeah. And that, that happened for me. It was just time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just going to get into um, thinking about other nurses. And that's so good that you still have your business on the side. Um, a mm -hmm. lot of what we teach is to start your business on the side. You don't have to quit your job. Um, and it's still going to be there when, you know, after you're done training to pick back up and to continue off where you left off. But I wanted to ask you it, with our listeners who are maybe dabbling into entrepreneurship, they're curious about it, um, starting something on the side. What are three pieces of homework that you would give them, um, to do in the infancy stage. So that could be a book or um, reading something that you like on, on the internet, or what would you suggest to our listeners? Um, a couple of suggestions. One of these, Dr. Jones, you're going to like this because it's kind of related mm -hmm. to having a dissertation a little bit. Okay. Number one, well, number one is really pick some twofold, pick something that is needed because again, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're choosing to have a service that's not needed, what's the point? So part one is pick something that is needed. But on the flip side, you also have to find something you're passionate about. Because if you're not passionate about it, what's the difference between just going to work for somebody else? <laughs> and when it does get tough, when sales are looking bad and you're negative or, you know, those tough times, that passion 
right? Like this, like, I know this is it. Like that's going to get you through all of those tenuous times because you, you have that belief and that you're providing something that is needed and you love it. Yeah. You love it. Like as much as I don't like dealing with, for example, if we have IT issues, okay, I'm not IT. I joke on when I get on <laughs> the Zoom with my clients. I am not Miss IT. We might have a little hiccups here and there. Like I hate that, right? Mm-hmm. But when I start teaching, I get in the zone and it just flips and I'm just going. See, that's what gets me through when I don't feel like dealing with these IT issues. So something mm-hmm. like that, right. you, you can't be a chore. There's mm-hmm. work to be an entrepreneur. But you shouldn't feel burdened. You should be excited. You should mm-hmm. be like, I can, I can do this. This is great. This is needed. This mm-hmm. is awesome. So that would be my first piece of advice. Pick mm-hmm. something needed, but also something you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. Um, second piece of advice I would say is you, you have to be willing. You have to have two qualities. You have to be able to listen and you have to be resilient mm-hmm. because Listen means listen from mentors, listen from people who've done it before you, listen to your customers. They might, we don't want that. We want this. We don't want that. So you have to be able to listen. You can't force feed what you think people want when they're telling you, yeah. we want this. Mm-hmm. Like me and the EKGs, like, yeah, I wanted to do more hypertension and cholesterol. Matter of fact, somebody flew me up to a conference. I spoke last uh, fall on cholesterol. Somebody wanted that specifically. But if I just did cholesterol hypertension, I got rid of EKGs, I'd be out of business Mm -hmm. because I'm not listening. I'm not listening to what people want. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. And the resilience. I mean, you, I mean, you guys know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, you know, know, when you're up at 3 a.m. working on stuff, it's like, what gets you through? Part of the passion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a thick skin. You almost really have to be hard headed, if that makes sense. You have to listen, but be hard headed. I know that's a weird juxtaposition, but you have to listen to people, but you have to be hard headed with Mm -hmm. no, no. Keep going. Put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. Just get through this day. Keep going. You can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, The last piece of advice I will give is a more tangible piece of advice. Um, There is a book written by Donald Miller. (laughs) <laughs> and one of his books is called The Story Brand. You guys know this. Yeah. Brand story. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I yep. would start there if I was building a website. I'll just I'll just say that. I would start there with yeah. building my website. Yeah. I love that. And by the way, you guys, um, that's definitely one of the very first books that I read. One of my yep. mentors told me to read it. <laughs> so, yes. Yes, I, I think that is a great starting point. And now you guys have artificial intelligence. Go, I'm gonna tell y'all what to do. Go on chat GPT, type in, <laughs> give me the top 10 principles in uh, Donald Miller's um, Your Brand Story, build, build Your Brand Story, whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. And it'll lay it out for you if you don't have time. I'm just saying, y'all, y'all got ch- chat GPT now. I didn't have it. I had to read all of it, even the fluff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> (laughs) okay this was so good thank you so much dr g now we need to find out what's the name of your course if you got some goodies for the listeners also where can we follow you you follow your journey reach you all the good things well you can reach me several different ways Uh, i have my instagram page uh dr g the mp so if you just type in d-r-g-t-h-e-n-p um, get me on Instagram that way. My website is drgthemp.com. No period after R and doctor, just, you know, drgthenp.com. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, Dr. G the MP, but it's spelled properly, capital D spacing, you know, the real, the real way you're supposed to, you're supposed to spell it. Okay. And then I also have, um, a Facebook group, um, where I have a guidance page. It's Dr. G the MP's, um, EKG guidance, something to that effect. Okay. We have about 8,000 people in that group. Okay. Oh, wow. Um, that's good. So that's why I'll post some of my free videos or um, if I have any announcements or anything like that. As far as my courses, I always implore people to start with my entry level course that is called The Anatomy of an EKG. Mm-hmm. That That is that is the one. Yeah, you that's don't the need one anything I need. else. <laughs> the Anatomy of EKG. Right. <laughs> Look, I always tell folks, if you take my anatomy course, by the way, the course is 
it depends. When I do it live, it depends on questions. It'll take me anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours just bearing questions, you know. Mm -hmm. um, recorded, I think it's slightly more than an hour and a half. I teach you where to look, when to look, and what to look for. Mm -hmm. okay. Real simple. Yeah. Okay. And I, it's a very foundational. Like I said, if everybody took my anatomy course and embodied it and mastered it, we would, the, the days of nursing not knowing EKGs would be over. Yeah. Just the one course. Yeah. Because all the other courses support it. I can teach you what a right bundle looks like or incomplete right or fascicular block. Or I can teach you old MIs. I can teach you LVH, left ventricular hypertrophy. By the way, LVH, the number one leading cause of LVH is hypertension. So mm -hmm. imagine looking at an EKG, seeing LVH, you have hypertension. Man, how'd you know that? My mm. blood pressure is 160 over 100. Yeah, that's not white coat hypertension. You have hypertension. Mm -hmm. You meet LVH criteria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could cooperate it with an echo, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, second leading cause of LVH is aortic stenosis. So again, you're a rock star now. You're listening for that murmur at the second intercostal right sternal border because you saw LVH on the EKG. You're wondering if you have aortic stenosis. Mm. So it's just stuff like that. Like that's yeah. the kind of stuff I like. I like to do. That Love sounds it. really smart. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm impressed. <laughs> right. Well, Dr. Yeah. Jones, look, Dr. Jones and Chris, I got to tell you guys, when I first started learning this stuff, I felt like I happened upon a gold mine. Wow. I was like, do other people know? Yeah. Like, do they, do they know? Do they know that I can fit, look at an EKG and tell you if your atria are enlarged? Mm -hmm. And that's another cause of hypertension. Do they know? Mm -hmm. Now, it's not completely diagnostic compared to the LVH, but it's just those little, those little things. Yeah. If I catch P my trial, a humped P wave in lead two, that's at least three baby boxes. Do you have mitral stenosis? Yeah. Like that, that's what I like to do. I like to to tell you the cheat code. Let me give you the cheat code. Yeah. That's what I want. The cheat yes. code. I love your passion though. <laughs> like you're just yeah, reminding me why I don't want to know this because this is already over. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, uh, 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 what she said. Um, <laughs> but no, this has been such a great interview. Thank love you so it. much, yes. Dr. G. Um, you guys, she is telling you exactly those who, which 95% of us struggle with EKGs and don't sit up there and lie if you listen and saying you right. don't need it because you do. But then also she has used her passion in order to help others to generate revenue as well. And this is something that we all can do. Maybe your thing might not be EKG. Maybe your thing may be ABGs. Who knows? What is it that you're good at? You know, and you need to think about that and ways that you can monetize it and bring an additional stream of revenue, but more importantly, be able to help other people who may struggle with the same thing. So again, yes. Dr. G, we appreciate you so much. This has been an amazing, amazing interview. And now you guys go follow her on her social media platforms. And she already provided you with her website, but you did not miss mention the discount code, Dr. G. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I would be remiss in not saying that. So <laughs> the discount code is BOSSUP15. That, that's no spaces, one five. BOSSUP15. Mm -hmm. With that promo code, you'll be getting 15% off anything on my site. That code is good until June 30th, yes. 11.59 p.m. Central Time. <laughs> yes. And also all caps for the boss. Boss up. Yes. Boss up. All caps. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. G. Thank you guys for listening in. As always, y'all know we continue to bring you the value because we want to show you what is possible beyond just working a shift. Take care. Bye-bye. Yes.